Hello everyone, my name is Derek De La Paz and we're here at Mill City Roasters in Northeast Minneapolis. As a roaster operator or a production roaster, sometimes I'll call it, one of the things you should do before you start your roast shift, before you fire up your roaster, is just take a quick tool around your roaster every morning. Um, and then you wanna check your chaff can and you definitely wanna check under your burner. You know what I mean? Those are two places that I like to check before I start up the roaster, before I get into my roast shift. So when I came in this morning, um, I have a pretty big roast order for this week. And so I came and walked on the roaster, made sure everything was good, emptied my chaff can, it was all straight. But then when I looked under my burner, I noticed that there was a very large pile of chaff of which some of it had started on fire in my previous roast day. And there was chips of beans and some little beans that had gotten through and fallen through um, and gotten into the burner tray. So there wasn't a bunch of bean drop under there. There wasn't a bean fire under there. It wasn't any serious danger or anything like that. Although a small chaff fire is a quality of cup issue because you do draw the air through the basically burners through the sides. It, the air comes in from here, goes through the burners and then goes into the drum onto your fresh green coffee. So if you do have a little chaff fire under there, that acrid smoke is gonna get drawn into the drum and potentially basically add in a note of kind of roasty barbecue to your roast. And if you're going dark, you probably won't notice it, but if you're going light, you'll definitely notice it. So we definitely wanna deal with that before it becomes an issue for quality of cup on the cupping table. So I saw the pile of chaff that had been burned. I saw the beans and all that, and it was kind of a 50-50. The factor that really pushed me over the top, other than quality of cup issue, which I probably would have done anyways, was the fact that I have a very small coffee that I'm roasting for a customer today. Um, it's a very small Vietnamese coffee. The beans are teeny. They're smaller than the smallest beans that had fallen through the gap last week. So that tells me that this coffee will not work in this drum gap. So I should probably, for quality of cup, bring the gap forward. That way I won't have chaff fires that, that could potentially add a little note of smoke to my roast today. And because I'm gonna roast this coffee that's small, let's just make sure we have a really nice drum gap. That way we don't have to have an issue with rub or bean drop or anything like that once we get into roasting this coffee. So I'm thinking it's just a good idea to just get that knocked out ahead of time. The first thing I had to do is remove the, the, the cooling tray cover. We need to get to the gap, which is down in here. And it's easiest to just remove the cover to get it out of your way so that you can really get in there and work on the gap. If you have a really big machine, you might even move your cooling tray just so you can get easy access to the gap. Then you're gonna need a few tools, not a lot. I have a dead blow hammer. Um, I have a Sharpie right here. I have a small little flashlight because a nice flashlight will be really nice so you can get a view in here. You know, your, your drum light or your roaster light will work partially, but it's dark in there and we're looking at a gap. So we're looking at a, a spot of darkness. So a nice flashlight to just get in there a little bit better will definitely help. Um, then I basically have some Allen wrenches, or I mean some, some Allen keys, some bent ones, so I can stick them in the gap. These are gonna be for measuring the gap for me to find where I'm at, and then measuring the gap post to see where a happy gap is. And then I have some other Allen wrenches that I'm gonna use because there's set screws in the um, bearing that I have to loosen to then be able to move the drum. I'm gonna use these to loosen those. Um, and then I have some cupping bowls here because the other use for cupping bowls is to hold nuts and bolts so they're not lost or so you can keep them in groups for what their use is. So I'm gonna have some of these here for my set screws or any other thing that I might need to remove. At this point now, I'm gonna use, the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure my drum gap with the Allen wrenches. I'm gonna find which one fits in there and then which one won't. And then that'll give me basically a basic gap measurement. Then I'm gonna take my Sharpie and I'm gonna make a line on the shaft because then that's gonna track the movement of the shaft today. Then I'm gonna loosen my set screws. I'm gonna go towards the back and I'm gonna knock the, knock the drum forward, I'm only going for half a mil. So I'm gonna take the Sharpie and I'm knocking it forward. So I'm gonna take the Sharpie and I'm gonna mark the shaft up against the collar. So that'll be all black with the Sharpie. Then all I need to do is knock the drum forward. When, once I see a half mil of open metal, now I know my gap is brought forward. I'll measure it again on the front with one of these tools just to see where the cold gap is. Then at that point, I'll tighten the set screws and I'll fire the drum up. I'll bring the drum up to full speed and I'll just listen for rub. We could have brought it too far forward and then the drum's rubbing on the face plate. That's a problem. So if we hear rub, we're gonna turn it off and back it away. If we don't hear rub, which we're gonna cross our fingers, we shouldn't hear rub because we're, we're not gonna bring it that far forward. If I had to guess, I'm saying we're at a three mil gap. So we're gonna bring it to around a two and a half mil gap. So we won't hear rub at a cold drum. Then we're gonna fire it up. We're gonna fire it up at full gas with low air. We're gonna purposely try and malform the drum a little bit so we can create rub to kind of recreate hard roasting conditions for the drum. 
If we bring the drum up to temp and we don't hear rub, we're basically good to go. I'll go with a little bit longer warm up, listening for a rub along the whole way, and then I'm just gonna go in it and roast a charge. And then we'll see. We'll see when we roast a charge really what's going on. Well, I'm gonna get into the drum gap adjustment because I do have some coffee to roast and I'll see you all in a little bit. All right, welcome back everyone. So, success. So basically, I did what I was explaining to you all. So I loosened the set screws, made my mark. Uh, three millimeters was the current gap. I, um, yeah, it was just, I think I've done this a few times, so I just kind of had that in my muscle memory of my brain. Um, and what you saw was I put the two and a half millimeter down in there. Two and a half millimeters has been kind of like the kind of perfect gap for the three to 10K. The two and a half has been a really solid gap. I think maybe even the 20, two and a half is pretty solid for drum gap. So two and a half has been in my head for a nice gap. So I put that two and a half millimeter Allen in there. Um, I, after I loosened up my set screws and made my mark, I then tapped it forward. One tap is all it took because the, the bearing, or the, once the bearing set screws are loose, it's pretty loose at that point. Um, and then keeping the two and a half in the gap meant that I couldn't over, um, basically over gap the drum. It meant, meant that as the drum came forward, it would pinch on the, the Allen key and keep it at two and a half, you know, which is, I, I didn't want to move it too far, but it's really hard to know how far to, tap it forward. So that's just a little safety measure that I used. It wasn't so tight that I couldn't pull it out. So it, mean, it means that it's a little more than two and a half millimeters. So once I pulled out the, the Allen key, I looked at the, the, um, the mark and there's, there was a subtle uh, variance of steel, which you should be able to see that in the steel shot, the before and after steel shot of the mark on the bearing, exactly what I wanted. So then I just retightened my set screws down, tightened them up, fired up the drum, brought the drum to full speed, no rub. Then I fired up the, or I did ignition, brought the gas up to full gas, which on this machine it's 2.8. And you can hear it right now, I have it set to 460 and I use low airflow because low airflow and high gas will basically create drum rub because it'll malform the drum subtly. You know what I mean? So I did that. Now we came to temp. We're now at 460 and you can hear the burner coming on at high temp. We're cycling up through 460. There is no drum rub. It is quiet as can be. So we're really good. Um, I feel like I'm really good on that gap. Now I could still get some, some chaff drop. We only did about a half of a millimeter or less of a, of a drum gap adjustment forward. We could still need to maybe go another quarter mil. We're not gonna know that until we start to roast. I don't wanna over gap the drum and get rub and then just kinda go backwards. So we're gonna leave it where it's at. We're gonna start roasting coffee. I'm gonna start off, I think with a dark roasted Peru. So it'll take a lot of heat. Cause I'm gonna put a lot of heat to that cause it's a dark roast and the Peru's a little bigger bean. So I shouldn't have any issues with bean drop cause I brought the gap uh, closer so we should see issues with the drum in that roast. If I apply a mega amount of heat to a full charge and it starts to rub, well, then we know we have issues. That's why I'm gonna use dark brew. Um, also that proving a bigger bean, not going right into the Vietnamese coffee, I know I won't get a bunch of bean drop. And so it'll give me a roast to assess chaff drop and things like that. But I think we're totally golden. Um, you see, I got my roasting apron on. I have my charges weighed out and I'm gonna get roasting. So I think we're all good here. Um, just wanted to give you all a little holiday bonus drum gap adjustment video. All right, cheers from the Mill City crew. Have a good day. See ya.